thing is going. Welcome to Practical Sea School. This is the first video in our series called Boatyard Basics, where we aim to give you the ability to look after your boat to a really good standard. We think that it's really important that as a sailor, you can carry out the general repairs and maintenance to your boat yourself, so that when inevitably things break at sea, you can come up with an effective repair that will get you back into port with the minimum of fuss. One of the first big jobs I had to do on Black Sheep was to replace the forward bulkhead as the plywood had completely rotted. Now, of course, replacing a whole bulkhead isn't a minor repair job. It's a major refit job. But all the things I learned about polyester resin and epoxy resins when I was considering how I was going to do this job has been so useful for all the other little repairs and modifications I've done to Black Sheep since. When I started this bulkhead job, I hadn't done any large fiberglass projects. So I asked around to try and get an idea of what materials I should be using. In response to these, I received a load of completely contradictory opinions, many of them very passionately held. So I decided the best thing to do was carry out a little experiment. So I carefully masked out three one and a half inch areas onto good quality marine plywood. Next to that was a piece of marine plywood of the same thickness with masking tape on. And this provided a really nice level bed for me to lay glass up onto. The first tab I laid down was epoxy. The second one used Primax onto the plywood first. Now Primax is a special product for improving the bond when laying up onto wood using polyester resins. It's really simple to use. You paint it on, leave it to go tacky after about 20 minutes, and then you lay up your cloth using your resin as you usually would. Here again, I used four layers of Biax cloth. Now I really noticed how much quicker it was to wet out the cloth using polyester resin as opposed to the epoxy. The epoxy took about twice as long, but we'll talk again about that later in the video. The third patch had four layers of Biax with just polyester resin on it, nothing else. Now, after leaving it to cure for a few days, I removed that extra bit of plywood, which was simply there to give me a nice level bed to lay up onto. I then, just using my hands, tried to peel off these tabs. Epoxy first, and on a scale of one to 10, it was a good eight. It required a lot of my strength to get that off. Polyester on its own next. A two, this came off incredibly easily. Primax, this had a bit of fight. I think that was a good six. Both the epoxy and the Primax left cloth on the plywood and broke in the layup, implying that the bond was stronger than the actual materials. So this experiment gave me the confidence to go ahead and use standard polyester resin combined with Primax to glass in the new forward bulkhead in Black Sheep. However, I really wasn't happy with how subjective this first test was, so I decided to carry out the test again, and although it's far from scientific, what we're going to try and do now is get an actual measure of just how strong these different resin combinations are. The first experiment we're doing here is a shear test. Now, this is very different to me peeling the tabs off with my bare hands. It's a very different force, but I was really interested to see how much these little one and a half inch squares would hold in shear. Thank you. Come on. That's a big old 
strength there, I'll tell you that. That is quite oh. extraordinary. The results of the shear test were really quite surprising. All the tabs, even the polyester one, held all the lead I dared to put into these two buckets, well over 200 kilos. So next I screwed in the plywood upside down so I could redo the peel test. Instead of peeling them off with my hands this time, I drilled holes at a set distance from the plywood so that each tab was under the same leverage. I then used a bit of line with a stopper knot to hang the weights from. the polyester and Primax. So this is the uh, polyester on its own, so I suspect this is going to be the weakest. Um, very gentle with this one. So 6.285, so 6.3 kilos. All right, well, let's see if this uh, epoxy is going to justify me pulling out all that lead. Put it in very gently. certainly doing better than I think it's going so this epoxy tab held almost exactly 30 kilos which is just under double what the polyester and Primax tab managed to hold so this is a close-up of the polyester tab and even though I applied several coats of polyester resin before laying up any glass, it really looks as though that hasn't penetrated very deeply into the plywood at all, and only the smallest fibres of wood have been carried away. This is a Primax tab, and it's broken in between the layers of the Biax cloth, so the bond to the plywood was actually stronger than the laminate. With the epoxy tab, the actual fibres of the Biax cloth have torn, and also some plywood has started to fail. Again, this shows that the actual bond was stronger than the surrounding materials. Now we've got this data, how can we apply that to make better decisions about which resin combinations to use in the general repair and maintenance of our boats? Well, I think the first takeaway is that standard polyester resin against plywood does not make a particularly good bond. Now, amazingly, that's how an awful lot of boats are constructed. So it's really worth having a good look at your bulkheads and seeing if the tabbing against the plywood has separated. Now, if it has, it's not too difficult to remedy that, and we'll be looking at that in a future video. Now let's look at the costs of these products. 5 litres of general purpose polyester resin with catalyst is around £30, so about £6 per litre. If you're using polyester against timber, we really recommend you prime that surface with something. Primax is quite expensive, but it goes a long way. Or you can use accelerant, which is how they used to do it. 
a 5 litre pack of Wes epoxy resin along with a 1 litre hardener making 6 litres and all is £130 making it about £22 per litre which is almost four times as much as the polyester. So when is the expense of epoxy actually justified? Well quite often it simply isn't and the only times I'll consider using it are very specific. Usually when the repair area is somehow constricted so I can't get a good bonding area. The area of any repair is determined by the thickness of the laminate. With this hole it's 12 millimeters. The optimum scarf angle for this is 12 times the thickness of laminate which in this case is 144 millimeters. Now if we draw a section through this repair it looks a little bit like this with these scarf angles being formed 12 times the thickness of the laminate and that gives us our bonding area to lay up onto. And this is why fiberglass repairs can get quite big quite quickly. Now this is all well and good as long as there's nothing in the way. Here we're on the side of black sheet and there's nothing stopping me having a scarf angle of one in 12. Here's where the Sansom posts went through the foredeck on black sheet. Once we'd removed all the rotten core material, we realized that the bulwarks prevented us from getting our nice 1 in 12 scarf gradient. To give us some extra strength because of this restriction, we did this whole repair in epoxy. So far we've spoken about the strength of these different resins, but there are other factors to consider. Here we're using epoxy on the underside of black sheep simply because it's known to be more water resistant than polyester resins. There are of course different types of epoxies with different properties. We chose WES because it's basically the most commonly available. Our tests indicate it's about twice as strong as polyester and it's well known to have better water resistance. In many ways it's more helpful to think of WES 105 as a glue which you can mix in different additives for filleting and at a push also use for laminating. Now the disadvantage of using it for laminating is that even at the ideal temperature for application it can take a lot longer as we found to properly wet out the cloth. Now there are specialist laminating epoxies available which would speed this up but as these are not readily available in chandries we decided that they were beyond the scope of this video. The glass transition temperature is the temperature point at which these composites start to soften and with epoxy it's quite low. For this reason I avoid using epoxies in areas that are going to be painted a dark colour and exposed to direct sunlight, like the top sides on black sheep. Now one of the big disadvantages of these older styles of epoxies such as 105 is the dreaded amine blush. Now this is a powder like substance which forms on the surface of the cured epoxy when it goes off in a humid environment such as those found regularly in the UK. Now we deal with it by using peel ply on pretty much every single epoxy repair job we do. We peel off the ply and that also peels off the amine blush but there are more modern epoxies out there which do not suffer at all from amine blush and they could be well worth consideration for a big job. One of the most significant disadvantages of epoxy is of course just how expensive it is. On the other hand, polyester resin represents brilliant value for money. It is easier to work with, there's no amine blush to worry about, it's not as sensitive to temperature for its cure time and you can come along the next day and lay up on top of something you did knowing that you'll get a good bond. General purpose resin is a laminating resin so you get a nice quick cloth wet out. The glass transition temperature is considerably higher, meaning that even in midday tropical sun with dark painted surfaces, your boat isn't going to start melting. It is, however, noticeably weaker, especially as a glue against plywood, and it's less chemical and water resistant than the epoxies. Now, we will be investigating some of these other factors in future videos, including the glass transition temperature. 
I hope this video has been useful and will enable you to make better decisions about when to use these different resins. For more videos in this series and for our sailing tutorials, go to www.c.school.